Hello everyone, welcome to uh, the Chill Out Zone, otherwise known as the BBC4 session, as you will find out why uh, in a moment, with the channel editor, Cassian Harrison. Uh, we've got Mark Bell coming on a little bit later on too, who uh, is looking at arts and music commissioning on the channel. But um, in tr the true DNA, I think, of BBC4, whilst Russell Brand is beginning his verbal onslaught somewhere else in the building, Cassian wanted to do the complete opposite. Yes, I'm afraid so. Uh, so um, I have a challenge for you all. Um, we all know what we like in the media industry. It's endlessly uh, checking your mobile phone, uh, seeing what's happening, twitching, trying to get the gossip, all the rest of it. Um, come the autumn, we have a BBC4 retreat coming to the channel, which I'd like to give you a little taste mm. of, which is going to be a week in the company of the monks of three different monasteries. Uh, around the country. It's our next iteration of Slow TV. And I wanted to give you a little flavour of um, one of those films. Uh, so five minutes I'm inviting you to spend with Father Christopher of Downside Abbey. Um, the challenge to you all is settle back, try for five minutes to just not look at your mobile phone. Not do anything else. My other there will be punishments for anyone. There will though. be punishments. <laughs> and my other mindfulness tip as you do this is endeavour to breathe through your nose. Apparently that induces even greater relaxation. Not I'm through your sure. toes. Not through, <laughs> not your, toes, through your toes, not through, through, through your mouth. Okay. Um, so, um, Father Christopher, it is. Shall we play? There you go. There you go. Is I it, we're all feeling it, suitably Yeah, suitably and nobody touched show. their phones, I don't think. It's, um, Cassie, it's a sort of, it's a captivating way to transmit a kind of stillness. It's sort of... Mm. Bake Off meets Big Brother meets Meditation or something like that. <laughs> like that. Um, and it, mindfulness is something that we're all, we all, you know, it's something that we all talk about with our friends and family and, you know, you sort of say, you should do a bit of headspace. Have you seen that app mm -hmm. and all that? Mm -hmm. Presumably you were doing a bit of that in your life. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that, the, the, you know, we'd started doing the slow television in the journey mode and that has been so tremendously successful with audiences. You know, every time we do a new one, the mm -hmm. audience jumps by another 200, 300,000. Um, and the feeling was that was a great mode, but were there other ways that we could approach that way of kind of television working at a different tempo and in a different mode and a different proposition to the way that it's conventionally conceived because clearly there's an appetite for audiences for that kind of thing and this thought of going into a world um, which is completely without distraction which is where the, the, the people who live in that world are completely and singularly able to just concentrate upon the single tasks and have dedicated themselves to the tasks that they're engaged in in that moment I think is something which actually personally I find enviable and extraordinary and, uh, and I just wanted to see if we could find a way to bring that into people's homes. And the idea of going into a monastery, A, access is difficult, and we'll talk to Nikki from Tiger Lily who mm. got that access, but mm. the idea initially was a, a slightly more factual-based yeah. documentary, wasn't it, mm. in the sort of more traditional vein, yeah. which is what it was going to start off as. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, and, and I think this is a general thing that I'd want to say about BBC4 is that, you know, we and the commissioning teams and I, we're interested across a whole a range of subjects. We're interested in content and programming and areas and genres that are absolutely the territory of television, but always the ambition is to think about how can we push that form on? How can we, ex you know, more than innovate, experiment with it uh, and find different ways of telling stories. Should we bring Nikki in? Let's actually? do that. So Nikki, just explain um, what you'd anticipated it would be and how it ended up as something very different in a way. Um, well, originally, we, um, there's a former commissioner who asked us about if we, if we could get access to monasteries inside a monastery um, and what happened to the day-to-day -day life of a monastery. Uh, so we went away and we got access to one. But um, we, and we had several meetings because obviously they're quite hesitant about cameras coming into um, their world. And we had many meetings to talk to them about the process of what we we're going to do and to talk about the fact that we weren't just going to um, do interviews. We were going to do, it was a BBC4 commission and it was going to be slightly different. And then we had a meeting with Cassie and we talked about an, a day in the life and we talked about slow television. And then we went back to the monastery and said, this is how we want to do it. You know, no interviews, just observing your daily life. And I think that really helped them feel comfortable mm. about allowing cameras in. And the filming process there, I mean, you couldn't ask them to redo anything, presumably. No, I mean, you, you, we just basically had to kind of follow their 
their daily life. I mean, obviously, we couldn't, we, we couldn't include everything. There's, you know, they have seven services a day. Um, we, in, with, in, each, um, in each hour, there are some services, and there are the activities they do are the ones that they do every day, so we mm. just kind of uh, talked to them about what they were doing on particular days we were there. And, I mean, the, you know, when you talk to people, you have an idea of what BBC4 does. It feels it's, it's self-indulgent to a point in the sense that it does something that nobody else does and it sort of, it treats things in a completely different way. Mm. But it's working, isn't it? That's the point for the channel is that it's, I mean, you're smashing slot averages and so on and you've won Digital Channel of the Year. Factual Digital factual, Channel factual digital of the Year. I don't want to say away from Damien. Yeah. Digital Channel of the Year. But um, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think it is self-indulgent. I think it is, it's the, it's, it's the other point that you make. It's about being distinctive. You know, uh, the, 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 there is an awful lot of television out there. There are many channels, particularly in the digital landscape. Um, and it's absolutely critical that, that, that what BBC4 does is it brings something really distinctive, both mm. to the BBC's portfolio, mm. um, but also to the broader landscape of television. And I think we managed mm. to do that really successfully. And as you say, we get really good on audiences in consequence of that, which is really gratifying for myself and everybody, you know, the BBC and all of the people who make programmes mm. for the channel. I think it's terrific for all of us. And the, the, I don't think there's anybody else who could do that, is there? I mean, is there anybody else who's doing anything similar out there? Um, yes, or is there possibly nobody else is mad? I'm not quite sure, <laughs> but nonetheless. But yeah. I think there's a truth of it, which is actually, you know, and, uh, and I think it's the truth of the, 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 this business as a whole. I mean, Jay was saying the same thing even about Channel 4, and, you know, Charlotte said the same too, which is, that you know you don't get anywhere and you don't achieve anything in this industry and in this landscape without taking some risks uh, and do the know, risks have the risks all paid off no I mean I think that's no, no sometimes things go wrong um, but I think that you need to feel that you're taking risks all the time I mean the interesting thing for me with BBC4 is that actually the odd thing is is that when I've commissioned things that feel a bit more conventional and I kind of format it uh, and feel maybe like a competition or something like that those are the things that have been least successful really? almost the BBC4 audience almost comes to the channel looking for something that is really different from the standard grammars of conventional TV. And it uses that different part of the brain yeah. that hasn't been used, you know. I think so, yeah. I hope so. I mean, that's great. I mean, and, and if it does that, I think that's brilliant because it means it's complementary to what Patrick is doing on BBC Two, yeah. BBC One and all the other channels. OK, so um, it might be helpful, I think, to have a bit of a, a showreel of, of all the highlights, yeah. I think. So do it's you not think? all slow TV. I no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The plot does thicken on yeah. some things more than just <laughs> the bread. I mean, other, yeah. thing, other things yeah. do um, mm. occasionally happen. Let's take a look, shall we? at the real. Great show reel actually. It's, uh, it must make you feel very proud of those programmes. Um, just to remind you by the way, if you want to um, ask questions of Cassie, and you can do anonymously actually if it would prefer to do so, uh, by going to the app and you can go through the take part section. But just talk us through some of those things there. Uh, what, it's difficult I think to look at that and then really go, okay, what are the priorities of the channel? Because mm. there's live events, there's music, there's documentaries, there's slow Quite TV. Lot, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, it's a, a very broad mix of what we do. I mean, predominantly in terms of what we commission from the UK, it's factual television. But again, we're always pushing the boundaries of that. So say the queers um, single pieces, the monologues, which you see in there is actually an arts piece, which we did for the Gay Britannia season. But I mean, I think there, are, for me, there are kind of three things which, um, uh, 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 I'm always looking for, or me and the commissioning teams are always looking for at BBC4. The first of which is, as I said before, is that you know our appetite for experimentation is huge in terms of what we can do in terms of subjects and also in terms of form. Um, so slow TV is one mode that we've done, but as I say, the queers pieces, which were eight 15-minute mono monologues curated by Mark Gatiss to go with the great Gay Britannia season, really kind of resurrecting the kind of form of Alan Bennett's talking heads, which we haven't seen mm. in years, which were just brilliant. Um, but as I say, at a 15-minute duration, again, not something you conventionally expect to find on a TV channel. Um, the Storyville, the OJ Made in America, uh, again, that felt like a risk to put on. That was five, two and a half our episodes, uh, which again we found a huge audience for, um, and that, that, that it, you know, again, I was completely surprised. I have to say that, that the fact that we could, um, people were willing to come to broadcast television in that mode, and then you know, we're always doing things even beyond 
that. So in the context of Storyville, there's the two and a half hour made a, a OJ series, but there was another ser a single um, uh, Storyville called Murder for Love, which was about an Italian uh, crime case, which we had as a 90 minute broadcast Storyville film, which I looked at and thought, they, they said they had an awful lot of material and they were originally looking to see if they could do it as a two hour broadcast film. I thought, well, we can't broadcast that. But I suggested that what they do is they go off and make six half hours, which we would then put on iPlayer alongside the 90 minute being broadcast on the channel. Um, and so we ended up with a fairly conventional Storyville audience of about 200,000 for the broadcast one. But the six 30 minute films ended up with an audience of two million. So, you know, that, that capacity, the, 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 the opportunities to experiment with form and shape and distribution and to be able to find new audiences, because that was also a very young audience that we found, yeah. I think are fascinating. So I think that's one thing. I think the second thing that, we're, uh, that we all are always looking for is, is new voices, new talent. Uh, new ways of looking at the world. And I think that, you know, we all talk, um, all of us at, at Edinburgh, etc., about issues of diversity, bringing on new voices. And personally, I think it's an incredibly important thing for BBC4 because it's, a, it's often the place where the BBC door opens for people. It's often the place where they can first stretch their legs, try themselves on television, you know, and then can move on to other channels. So I'm really proud of, you know, there's a whole slew of new talent that we've been able to bring to the channel. You know, we've got you know, BAME talent with Rita Ray doing a series on African music. I'm very keen on exploring worlds of disability. There's the Ryan Gander film that we saw there. We did a brilliant film that the documentaries team did called Life and Death, which I think is the only film ever made entirely in sign language. There was no speech at all, uh, where the production team there was deaf as well. So those opportunities to be able to bring new voices, new talent, and give them a, a first opportunity, I think that's really important. And the Corner Shop documentary got the largest increase of BAME audience yes. of any of the BBC yeah. channels, didn't it? Did, 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 did it? Is that right? Yes, it no. did. Oh, right. Okay, that's, right. that's new to me. No, that's great news. <laughs> no, but again, I mean, it's, it's, no, it's certainly, you know, Tom and the specialist factual team and I are always looking for what I call secret histories, stories mm. like that, which are about untold stories of communities, particularly in Britain, preferably told by people from those communities, which are, you know, tales which are normally hidden from our conventional social history narrative. And I think they can be brilliant. The Black Nurses film was another example of that. And when people think about BBC Four, you do think also of the arts. We do. Don't you? Um, science, history, mm -hmm. music. Um, what is it that you have most space for? Oh, um, I think we have space for everything if it's the right idea. I mean, just simply in terms of the, the amount of spend, I suppose it comes down to that. Mm. The dominant kind of area of spend for the channel is in arts and music. Uh, but we still have significant amounts in, um, in specialist factual and science. And Tom and, uh, Tom and the specialist factual team and I are really looking to see how we can expand the history narrative on BBC Four as well. And again, we, I think we've got some really exciting things coming down the line there. We're announcing today um, uh, two what we're calling box set history projects, which are, again, taking the modes of kind of serial etc but using again that kind of BBC you know shtick of real detail unpacking two quite small narratives but really important narratives in real detail over multiple hours so we're doing the story of Lady Jane Grey who was the the first queen of England although she was never properly crowned she was queen and then gone in nine days and as a kind of complementary to that at the other end of history uh, the story of the trial of Ruth Ellis which remains one of these kind of incredibly complex, multi-layered, kind of nuanced incidents in post-war history, which speaks to so many different elements of society, position of women, etc., etc., that, you know, I think these give real opportunities to unpack and tell stories with a kind of level of detail and richness that we don't normally manage on TV. That's good detail. Should we bring on Mark Bell, Let's who uh, is Head of Commissioning for BBC Arts? It's where you said a lot of the money yep. at the channel goes, Mark. Welcome. Sorry, you don't have any music. I, I feel a bit I mean about it. that now. No, 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 no. <laughs> we were going with the silence and the, <laughs> and the, <laughs> and the, and the natural. Yeah, exactly. We should have. We should have. Uh, welcome. So, should we go? Do you want to go straight into your clip? I mean, would that be helpful? Okay. The uh, men who sleep in cars, which yeah. is a, it's an odd one. When I, it's a, it's a. It's a verse drama that's based on a, a radio drama written by Michael Simmons Roberts. And it's actually 
made by Sue Roberts, uh, no relation, who um, is the, um, is, she's the executive producer up in, in radio in Manchester looking after poetry. And she made a film previously uh, called Black Roses. And this is a sort of, in a way, a partner to that. And it's a, uh, it's a verse drama with um, Maxine Peake sort of hosting it in some way. So we've got a taste of it here. Beautiful, isn't it, actually? I mean, it's extraordinary. We've seen a way of bringing stillness and calmness mm. and quietness to TV, and this is a way of bringing poetry and storytelling in a different way. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's filmed in a very, you know, fairly static way, and deliberately so, I think, and, and it does let the, the words breathe, really, and I think that great performances. Um, and I think that does have a distinctively BBC4 kind of tone and approach, and, um, and it's, it's curiously compelling, and I, but I think you have to get into the mindset for it a little bit. I mean, of listening to that that much verse over, over and it's linked time. isn't it I mean this is an important yeah. thing as well to talk about what the channel likes to do or wants to do more yeah. of perhaps is is have partners in you know the, the real world you know sort of yeah. real world events that are going on and this is linked to something going on in Hull yes there's a there's a there's a, a week of poetry called contains strong language which um of which this will be part um and it's the end of September and we've got three or four pieces going, uh, going on there, and there's radio as well. So it does mean that we can um, sort of make a week where poetry really cuts through and becomes... And it's not the only thing you're doing. I mean, whole city of culture, of course. There are other things that you've been doing on the channel and will be doing because of the city of culture element Correct, there. Yeah. Is, tell us a bit about it, but also just the idea that is that what, you know, people in this room ought to be thinking about, you know, the, the real world events that are going on that could tie into a piece of television for BBC Four? Yeah, I mean, I think th th there's always a challenge. You know, we're up in Edinburgh uh, right now and we've, we've made programmes about Edinburgh, um, the Edinburgh Festival, for that reason. Um, I think it's important when you make programmes about a real-world event that, you know, you can just capture an event and we do that. But I think often most interesting is when we find a way of making some television that either sparks out of something happening in Hull or in Edinburgh or Manchester International Festival. Um, and you get a sense of, um, you know, two things working together where, you, you know, you can you sort of catch more people's attention that way. Mm. So um, we do have a, a, a programme where will there be a sort of uh, spoken word uh, capture piece for, for Hull. We've got um, programmes on BBC Two about the Edinburgh Festival. We'll continue to do a wide range of partnering with um, with real world events, but I think we're always looking for a way of making it feel like uh, it's got its, its own, you know, the, it's initiated by television too. And is, is event TV, Cassian, sort of um, becoming a bigger part of what yeah, BBC I, Four feels works for it? I think there are two aspects to that. I think in the context of the, 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 the events which Mark and his team have been brilliant at pulling together, it's again, it's again about that thing of BBC Four being a place where the BBC can open its door to um, talent, to creatives, uh, who, who don't come from the conventional world of television production and you know there's a number of things that you've been pulling together where we're able to put people who don't really come from the world of television at all we're going to see another one yeah. uh, in a moment and be able to team those up with production companies to produce something that feels very very original and very different to what we'd normally see to the other point in terms of events absolutely I think that um, you know the, the challenge we have is we're a digital channel we're small we don't have quite the marketing resource and mm. you know we don't have the eyeballs of the papers and the way that the main terrestrial channels mm. have so ways that we can find shapes to do our programming that feel like they really have impact and they really stand out I think is absolutely critical so you know the idea of doing a week-long retreat on the channel I hope at least that that will be something that draws attention yeah but that also holds true in other genres that we do particularly Specialist Factual, again in the real, there's a, uh, a little bit of a wonderful film that we recently did, which was um, uh, Life and Death in Your Lawn, which was a year in the life of the British Garden. Hmm. Uh, and we really like, in science in particular, to find precincts or places which we can do something really supersized on. So that was a longitudinal natural history observational documentary filmed in a row of five gardens over the course of a whole year. Um, and what it brought out was a, 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 you know, a narrative of life, death, love, and all of those kind of epic things that 
happen on BBC One and Planet Earth 2 or whatever, yeah. but in your backyard. Shakespeare and in the garden. You know? exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And that's a very BBC Four way to do yes. things, which is to find something that seems small, but actually, when you delve into it, actually, it's a magnifying glass on it. And, yeah, absolutely. And um, talking about linking with um, sort of events and festivals, mm. the Manchester International Festival is something yeah. else that um, you've commissioned something, haven't you, yeah. uh, to go with? I mean, it's a sort of extraordinary idea uh, as a piece of artwork. And I know it's been a bit controversial as well from what I was reading about it. But just it's, it's, it's uh, Ukraine, is it Ceremony Ukraine? It's what it's called, is that Yeah, right? it's um, the artist Phil Collins, not yes. the drummer, um, yeah. who uh, has uh, brought a statue of Engels back to Manchester, well, not, not the statue's not from Manchester, but Engels was obviously in Manchester. And, uh, and it's about, um, there's a reason for it, which is to bring sort of the spirit of Engels back to some extent as well. That's his, that's his idea. And actually it's um, Tiger Lily again, who've, um, who've been making that film with us. Um, and Can we see a clip of it? We have a clip yes. of it, yes. And so you'll see a bit of Engels. On a truck. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anybody would necessarily have thought, you know, the Russian Revolution angles a statue being ripe for commissioning. Um, and I suppose, in a way, it, it, BBC4 is niche, isn't it? I mean, that's, I suppose, the point of it in many ways, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's niche, but it's also enormously important. I mean, I think, I think it's a narrow, uh, it, it's a particular project that... Phil Collins is doing there and it's a you know it's a it's a remarkable and strange but that doesn't make the themes that he's exploring niche I don't think so so I think that that's the, that's what the BBC4 you know you take particular stories and you try and make them uh, have you know make a bigger splash really I think that that's but but the idea of giving an artist a place to mm. sort of have a bit more um, directorial, I don't know what the word is, agency in, in, mm. in the process. It's sort of very dramatic filming for what, what is actually essentially a documentary type. Yeah, it yeah. is. And, uh, you know, the, the, the artist filmmaking, artists, yeah. artists make films and, you know, there is some crossover, but they normally don't belong on the telly and it's quite no. interesting to start exploring how it feels when you do that. I've heard some producers, you know, from independents say, you know, if they go in and pitch something to another broadcaster and they say, it's a really lovely idea, but it's much more BBC Four than us. It's seen as a slight put down, as in, yeah. actually, that's a bit of a shit idea. It doesn't really appeal to the masses, so can you go, leave <laughs> we'll call you, you know. It's not, and, but, and yet, I mean, isn't that partly, you know, you're not dictated to by ratings and accountability of that kind, are you? I mean, it's, Ostensibly that's it, we're not kind of partly where I say self-indulgent, because yeah, it is, yeah. um, in that sense, it couldn't exist, could it? Um, this I channel suppose not, exist. but no, I mean, bear in mind, you know, that in terms of the landscape of digital channels in the UK, BBC4 is the, has the, is the biggest factual channel uh, of all the digital channels. It's the fourth biggest of any of the digital channels. You know, it sits behind ITV2, etc. You know, so it absolutely earns its keep in its place. Mm. Um, you know, and, and it's true, actually, and it's a wonderful privilege to be able to be, you know, and I'm told by Charlotte and by Tony, you know, don't worry about the ratings. On the other hand, I know that if the ratings went entirely off a cliff, they might kind of come and talk to me a little bit about it. So, can I bring you in know, a question, so actually? Yeah. Do you, sorry, Mark, can I just bring in this question? Um, from somebody who says, are you doing anything to challenge the perception that BBC4 is targeted to the cultural elite and still unattainable to most of the British public? Uh, yes, I think we are um, appealing to a broader... OK, so Phil Collins is an artist and he's doing something quite particular, but it's also um, about the people of Manchester. It's, 
it's, it's engaging with quite a big issue, which is what was Engels writing about when he was writing and what has changed since? I mean, that's part of the, you know, you will, you, when you see the whole film, that will be part of the, um, the project. And I think, OK, so I, I don't think that being unashamedly um, sort of curious and um, intelligent is elitist or narrow. I think it's the opposite of that. Well, and, and in fact, that's what the audience figures prove. So the, 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 whoever the questioner is, uh, the idea that the BBC4 is an elitist channel, I'm sorry, but our audience demographics completely belie that, which is our spread between ABC1 and C2DE is exactly the same as BBC1 and BBC2. And it's interesting because uh, in the show reel, there was some very punchy, you know, there's hip hop in there. There's a lot of, you know, as I said, the corner shop idea was brilliant. You know, the saving the NHS all black nurses. There's, there is a lot more going on than what your perception might be, mm. that it's a very white, you know, sort of over 60s, yeah, I, university and educated, you, you know, that kind of... it's our job to make sure that yeah. it isn't that. And we do that and we approach that very aggressively and very proactively. And I think the other thing is that, OK, so some of these pieces, you know, they are quite experimental in terms of what they're doing. But, you know, I also think that one of the core things about BBC4 actually is completely opposite of what that question is, is I think we do incredibly well across our arts and our music and our specialist factual output is we're able to take complex subjects and be able to present them to audiences with a tonality which is welcoming, which doesn't feel like they're being talked down to. And as I say, all of the ratings and the audience profile show that we succeed in that. Mm. Where does the power lie between you two? It's shared. It's shared. It's yeah. shared. Yeah, no, it's like, a double tick this, is, this is what Cameron and Clegg said. You know that, don't <laughs> you? And it all went horribly wrong. So. <laughs> but, um, well, we've no, known each other for years, so it doesn't seem to have gone wrong yet. No, it's no. Right. But in terms of you know, people in the audience and others who yeah. want to pitch or have an idea, mm -hmm. you know, obviously your arts and music, I get, you know. No, I'm arts. Arts. Jan, Jan Young's husband is music, but I'm here representing. Okay. Sort of. So is it you they come to first or who? Yeah. How does it, yeah. yeah. They come to me, but quite often if. Quite, quite a lot of the seasons we do cut across genre, and so sometimes there might be a season that, that Cassian's planning that, um, that might have some arts in it and some, some science or some other special effects or, or a doc in it, and that, that works very well for us because I think then you can get a range of um, different, different feeling and distinctive programming within a, under a single banner, like the Gay Britannia or like the recent Japan season we did, which had you know, a, quite a... An, an artist focused piece in the Ryan Gander, which you saw a little clip of in the thing, but also a more sort of, I suppose you might say, more traditional ideas driven, presenter led, three parter, and also these really curious half hour handmade in Japan uh, films, which were half hours about how you make a kimono. So I think it had a range, and that's how, it, that's how the channel works. And actually, it was, it, it's really successful because not everybody will watch everything, but everybody kind of gets, is aware that there was a Japan season going. A lot of people are aware of what the Japan season was going on, and it, it, it cut through. What do you say no to? I, can, I say no to uh, things that feel too formatted for BBC4. I think uh, we have the advantage of having a, three channels, and, and there are things that obviously feel better for BBC Two, so sometimes I might say no to BBC Four on behalf of BBC Two so that we can take it elsewhere. It depends on the scale and size of the idea and the, the sort of name recognition of it. Um, I think that on the whole, formatted shows don't work for us. I'm saying probably less presenters generally and less generalist presenters, more um, presenters with particular interests, I think. Cassian, is there anything else? You, I mean, what do you say no to? Um, it's difficult to um, uh, 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 to give it as a class of, but um, I think there's a there is that danger, which goes back to that question that you said before, which is that people's response is, oh, it feels a bit BBC Four, take it to BBC Four, um, which is that there can be a sense that you know, often people can think a, think of an idea or have a thought which ends up being here's a thing and let's do a program which is a survey of that thing, uh, of that subject and. Uh, people kind of feel because we can do we do stuff in quite a straight detailed way sometimes they think oh that's a BBC four film but actually that isn't it needs to have a real sense of life and intellectual inquiry and dynamism behind it so if it's something that feels quite flat and feels quite conventional and forgive me feels like it'll be wallpaper that is not BBC four so it's slow drying 
and yeah. it's really slow. Yeah, no, if it's going to be wallpaper, it's got to be very deliberately it's wallpaper. It's the most beautiful yeah, it, thing you've ever seen, exactly. <laughs> drying on a wall. It's expensive wallpaper, yeah. I yeah. think it's, it's not just about subject areas, it's about why the sub subject areas are significant. So the ideas behind subject yes. is what I'm most interested yes. in. So when people come and pitch to me, you know, they may want to say, I want to make a film or series about X. And I'd, my first question would be why, and uh, because that's how it opens out, really. And you have to be thinking about what the bigger picture is, really. Shall we change the mood slightly? Mm. Shall we lift the mood slightly, shall we, with a bit of Nile Rodgers? Oh, okay. Yes. Sounds like it goes back to the contained strong language thing <laughs> we were talking uh, about from Hull. How did you get access to, to Niall? Um, uh, it was through Jan, actually, who's our head of commissioning for music. Um, uh, and she's brilliant. She's brilliant at building relationships with talent all across the piece, classical world, pop world, etc., etc. But I think the thing about that, that also bespeaks another kind of core thing with BBC4, which is that... Um, uh, we really value experts and expertise, um, you know. And Friday nights on BBC Four, from you know, the music nights have been, you know, it's a it's a it's a, a night established by my predecessors, um, which is a fantastic kind of you know punctuation point in the television scheduling weekly calendar, and it's a real privilege to be the custodian of that. But we've done a lot of films which are kind of voiceover driven, kind of archive documentary mm. surveys of particular eras. And both Jan and I really feel that we just wanted to turn the dial on that, and as it were, put the musician at the centre rather than just doing kind of rather distant which makes it harder to get obviously it's it's a real yes. challenge you That's know the um, bit. it's it, it, you know we and we managed to do it and as I say it's Jan's so brilliant at the relationships but god the work to get that together yeah. was phenomenal another thing that we're tre tremendously proud of which is another kind of form busting thing was our lost weekend with Keith Richards where we managed to get Keith Richards to curate an entire weekend of the channel with his own films and do commentaries in between and being able to get those that level of star and that level of giving over the channel, the channel to someone yeah that, absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah no uh, and that's terrific and it's about finding the right people you know not everybody is a bbc4 person but Noel rogers and keith richards definitely are i think you know for everybody here it's it's fascinating to hear the way you think and you are sort of embody the channel don't you i guess I, you... a bit but you know it's shared i mean it's a collaborative process you know as i say with everybody commissioning yeah. all the people who make the programs etc but you know but yes i really love the <laughs> yeah. what it does um, and people want to be part of the success of it, don't they? So I suppose, look, there is a perception amongst people, and they remain nameless, that um, if you are trying to get your foot in the door at BBC Four, uh, unless you are sort of best friends with somebody who runs the V&A, or you, uh, you know, you dine with the director of X Y Z, or that you got an Ox haven't got an Oxbridge degree, or you don't have a smoking jacket, that potentially you may never. Get a look in. I think that's uh, that, there's certainly the bit about the smoking jacket, etc., etc., completely untrue, and I hope we've been able to show that to a certain extent. Look, there is a challenge with BBC Four, which is that we don't have as much money as the other channels. That means that we're not able to commission as many hours as the other channels, which means that we, you know, we, it, it, it's, it's inevitably going to be harder for somebody to get a programme away on BBC Four. I wish it was different. I wish we had, you know, many more commissionable hours, but unhappily that's the way it works. But nevertheless, we do, I think, manage to get a brilliant channel out of that. Um, but that doesn't mean that Mark or Tom or Jan you know, that they aren't willing to, and you will always look at an idea which is yeah. submitted. Don't you have like, a, you, you have your trusted indies that you go back to um, again and again, which I understand is a sort of nature of building relationships. I get that. But for others, it may feel that it's a closed circle and, and actually, I think there are if, you're not, if, you're not, if you're not very well connected. I, I, no, I, I don't think, think, think that's true. I think there are, I think there are quite a lot of people who struggle on the budgets, to be honest. I think quite a lot of indies find the um the cost per hour quite onerous to, to give deliver. us some ideas what, what what kind of i mean give an idea of what of, of the budgets yeah well you know they're roughly about 100k an hour which is not enormous for a lot of you know for and um, we do expect quite a lot for the money it, i mean they're quite you know heavy on the labor intensive uh, yeah. yeah on the labor and you know we expect quite a lot for it and we're quite sort of stringent in 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 what we expect but yeah, but delivering a good BBC Four program because of the money that we have, and I remain eternally grateful to the, all of the BBC Four suppliers, and I'm sure many are in this room as well. Because you know, making a program for BBC Four, it's got to be, and it is as much about the passion of wanting to make the film as it is about wanting to make some money. Is there room to do more current affairs on the channel in BBC Four's style, given Brexit, given Trump? You know, these sorts of things are 
ubiquitous now in all of our lives. And it's not something that, as it were, we have specifically funded, but, you know, another really important part of the channel is Storyville, uh, which is the documentary, global documentary strand, which is, you know, a, again, a crown jewel of the BBC, and we're really privileged to be a home for. Um, and that absolutely is stories about the contemporary world. Um, now, that's a mode which they tend to be international documentaries, and that's another thing which BBC4 is very important for, and the BBC kind of story, which is opening, opening the audience's eyes or opening our doors to global stories and global drama. Um, so current affairs, absolutely, but it tends to go through Storyville and it will tend to be those big international pieces. We might touch also on the, uh, the cultural end of con current mm. affairs. For instance, we did the Rich Hall thing that was in the clip. You know, we will reflect sometimes on, um, you know, if, if we find someone who feels like a cultural critic rather than a, you know, mm. sort of political kind of, um, you know, political person through and through, then we will, might pick them up and do a sort of effectively a cultural essay about that, that reflects on current affairs. What's the average age of a... Going or, down. Is it? Yes, because yes. the perception is... Which it's actually, I think there's no other channel anywhere whose audience is going down. Are you tapping your toe in uh, joy? <laughs> no, it's old, um, yeah. uh, but it's around the average of the BBC portfolio. It's late 50s. But as I say, last year we were, um, uh, you know, I think certainly for the first time in the history of BBC Four, uh, the, our median age started to Well, you decrease. do the Mercury Prize and so on. That was in the showreel, wasn't yeah. it? I mean, is that... Are you looking... To, I mean, it's interesting, you know, for people who are thinking of ideas to pitch to you, are you looking... For to attract younger audiences, yeah, or is it a byproduct of the things you do anyway, or what? Look, the truth of it is, for BBC Four, it's never going to be a channel which is going to be targeted at 16 to 34. No, well, you've got BBC Exactly, that's yeah. Damien's job, and he does a brilliant job with that. But that doesn't mean that, you know, there's a, there's a term in BBC strategy speak, which is a bit... A bit excruciating, but nevertheless, we call it replenish your audiences. Uh, but nevertheless, th there's that world which is from 35 to 55, uh, which is younger than our median age, and which is an incredibly lively and important audience for us. And being able to talk to them, I think, is terrifically important. And you know, strands like Storyville, in particular, absolutely engage that 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 mode of audience for us. Musically, artistically, yeah, younger same audiences. Applies. Yeah, no, I own... think. I... Arts is a, you know, there are lots of different types of art. Some of it skews to older people, some of it skews to younger. I think we need to do both. I mean, I don't think we should abandon all, you know, art history if it just because it skews a bit older. We should do both. And I think that the... Where's your priority, though? I mean, you know, if you've got... Where, I, I think... Put your, where would you put your money, you know, sort of first? I think my priority is to, is to pique people's curiosity in the most rich and surprising way I possibly can. And I don't think it's about covering all the bases because I think the, the arts are too broad for us to be able to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that every year. So I think that the idea of focusing on particular uh, themes and building around them does, does manage to get the channel to cut through with seasons. I think we have to be, um, so I think we can focus down occasionally in order to mm. give it some, you know, to, to create some depth. I think the challenge of, of covering the bases of, of the partnership question, the coverage question, the, you know, we, we can't abandon a, a, you know, we can't abandon genres entirely. We have to do dance. We have to do as much as we can across the piece, but we can't do it all, all the time. Uh, question, what are you currently keen to get more of? I mean, I suppose you're trying to cover it, but they're looking for slightly more detail, I think. Yeah, I suppose. Um, in terms of the multi-part series, we're still, uh, you know, we've done, we showed you Japan, we've got a Mexican one coming up. Um, we're driving them more with the ideas than the pure sort of geography and art history. So think about the ideas that might um, uh, come out of, um, you know, think, think about it from, from, from themes rather than from uh, I mean, periods of history. Um, yeah. I was just going to say the, the, a, a term which I think is really important in terms of what we're looking for, and we've got a series on called Utopias, which I'm very proud of, is, is real intellectual ambition. Uh, I think that's another thing which is absolutely the heart of what BBC4 What's is. What's Utopias? Just so it's a three-part series with Richard Clay presenting. He's a brilliant academic from Newcastle. And it's the story of the idea of utopian dystopia. And what I love about it, and, and I think you also like it yeah. too, Mark, is that it's, it's, uh, it's an incredible kind of roller coaster journey through the history of an idea which is 2,000 years old, first kind of, you know, cooked up by Plato, which covers art, architecture, culture, literature, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful kind 
kind of, you know, shaggy dog narrative that takes you through all kinds of aspects of the cultural waterfront. And that, that there's a real pleasure in that, you know, moving from one area to another and bringing ideas and rubbing mm. them together, which I think is absolutely the DNA of BBC Four. And so when you're talking, you know, about budgets and indies, I mean, I've, you know, a lot of indies say BBC Four is, is a really tough place to get a commission, actually. Um, you know, £100,000 an hour is, is what you're saying. So if um, an independent company is commercially minded, do they just think, just let's forget about BBC Four? There are ways you know, and, and is it a passion something. project place? Yeah. You know, if I you, mean, co pros are hard, but on the whole, they tend to be passion projects. I don't think there are, you know, I don't think anyone's going to get Masses of really brilliant. rich yeah. off BBC Four, but, you know, it's turnover and uh, you might get, you know, you might get something you really want to make out of it. And I think that that's what we all do it for, really. It's, it's a really exciting place to make programming for, but it's, um, you know, it's onerous on the money. I wouldn't deny it. But okay. you, the, the, you know, there are, you know, in terms of the spread of the suppliers, you know, there, there are small indie suppliers who, you know, are, are, are uh, who we support and are key to the business. But, you know, the big, the, 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 the really big companies like Wall to Wall, they also love coming and working for BBC Four as well. Um, another question. Um, how much opportunity is there for science on BBC Four? And you've touched on it, but they, this person says the amount of content in that regard seems to have gone down recently relative to arts. Is that a money thing again? Is science... Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think we've remained fairly steady. I think we might have gone down a couple of hours or something like that. But um, no, it still remains a really central part of the channel. And also what BBC4 does in science is really important to the BBC4 science story. So no, the opportunity is always there. OK, so uh, the key things that seem to be coming out is that, you know, you want, you like the event tie up you know, you like interesting new ways of looking at things and it's got to be intellectual and so on. What's the best way to pitch to you? I mean, you know, if people here need to take some notes and go back to the office and share them, what do they say BBC4 wants and how to do it? Um, I think passionate enthusiasm is a good thing. I think uh, having uh, a decent amount of knowledge about the subject that you're pitching is, is yeah. handy. I think finding new talent is good and I think the talent that has an expertise in that area because they, they the person on screen, actually really wants to tell you about something is normally um, pretty crucial, actually. So, you know, it could be Vic Reeves talking about Dadaism, who, who you know, not everybody knew that uh, Jim Moyer was, a, was, you know, keen on the subject. Um, or it could be somebody who's from the world of academia. Both are interesting to me, but I think it's about that, the, the engagement. I want them, I want to feel like the producer and the per person who might be on screen yeah. really care about the subject. You want to work more, I heard, I think you want to work more with galleries and institutions, is that right? You already have existing relationships, don't we you? We already Kate do a lot of so that on. and uh, I, you know I think uh, we're keen to broaden that and continue okay. to work around the country but I think it's more important for us to be working with um, artists and thinkers really. Um, um, I'll just ask you a quick question. Uh, if you could get, it's a simple answer, if you could get any rock or pop star on BBC Four, I think after watching the Nile Rodgers thing, which, who would it be? Uh, God, 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 you know, there is somebody who was it. No, we had a long struggle to get Tom Waits. I just always wanted to get Tom Waits. There's Bob Dylan. If you'd never get Bob Dylan to curate well, a Nobel weekend. Yeah, get him, exactly. <laughs> Precisely. So, you know, yeah, they are, that would be quite a coup. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mark. Uh, uh, let me keep pondering. I'll go on. Come back yeah, we're, we're going to go to our final clip actually because we're almost out of time. Yeah. But yeah. Go on. I do have a shopping list um, somewhere. <laughs> anybody I really want to get on the. Uh, uh, I've gone completely um, empty headed. Um, who would I really like to. I think, I think well, we should have more Patty Smith on the channel. Do you? Yeah. Let's talk about that. All. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we have come to the end. Thank you for all your questions, but I think as a reward for sitting so patiently, and I think, don't think you've been playing with your phones that much, uh, we're going to give you a treat, and the, uh, there's a, a sneak peek, isn't there now, of a, a new series of this much-loved drama, uh, which has brought metal detecting firmly into the spotlight. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is series three of The Wonderful Detectorist, which I remain tremendously proud of. Yeah, I'm a bit worried that this whole session has made BBC Four sound like it is, you know, intellectual, highbrow, dry as dust and all the rest of it. We really do like to have fun. We have a really strong comedy narrative. Detectorist is a piece that I'm incredibly proud of. I'm also incredibly proud of the fact that um, Mackenzie, who makes it, absolutely loves having it on BBC4, mm -hmm. which is a real compliment. Yeah. It is quite BBC4-ish though, as you'll see from this clip. <laughs> this is a preview of series three of Detectorist. It's just, what a brilliant way uh, to end the session. It's a fabulous series. Yeah. <laughs> we can't expect more of that, can we? I mean, it's going nowhere. All right.
Well, thank you, everybody. It just remains me to thank our panellists, of course, Cassian Harrison, Mark Bell. Also, to our, uh, thank you to our sponsor, Broadcast. And thank you to all of you for coming today. Thank, thank, you, thank you very, very much. much.